Hey guys and gals, I'm going to be up front with you. Unless you are an experienced bait maker or you've watched my first video and have a pretty good grasp on it, I'm not sure this is going to make a whole lot of sense, but I'm assuming that you've already watched it. If you haven't, it's up here in the iCard of this entire process of how I made a fairly big swim bait. Very, very comparable in terms of performance and weight and aesthetics to some of the something you would pay like two, three hundred dollars for from a store or from an independent bait maker. I show you how to do that while you still have a day job and you know you're just kind of an average Joe who just loves to fish. I mean, we melt down worms to make the tail. We buy pretty much everything from Hobby Lobby, and there's a few things we got online, but other than that, it's pretty much off the shelf at your local craft store, and you can make something like this DIY without any kind of crazy tools in your garage. And the effectiveness of the bait was pretty good, I'd have to say. I caught a lot of good fish on it. This was actually maybe the first fish, that little stripper here, followed by, you know, some other fish that I didn't get on film. Some of the other ones that are more notable that I got on film was this big smallie. I've never caught a smallie on a swim bait this big ever in my life. And that thing pretty much crushed it. I was pretty happy about that and to even get that on film in two camera angles no less. And then the bigger one here was my achievement of getting my personal best and only muskie. And it was off this bait. That was like my plan. I went down to Illinois and grinded with a few like elite tiny boaters down there, my crew. And uh, one of them put me on this, this pond and we did our thing out here and then my whole goal was to crush a muskie on this bait and lo and behold it was a very very nice muskie and we crushed it on here so I just want to let you know that the process of that bait making everything we went through i know i've gotten a few um, dms on facebook and instagram you guys show me the baits you've made from this video and then you've shown me you're crushing it you're catching largemouth well i'm a little jealous because i've caught every fish on that bait but a largemouth but i finally found one that only catches large mouth and nothing else. So I'm going to show you that one right now. It's a crank down swim bait and we are going to get to that right now. I love this bait. And if you've already made your glide bait, making this crank down swim bait is going to be cake to you. So stay tuned. It's all starting right now. All right. So when I found out about this bait, there were a few up and coming ones. The more notable one that's known by everybody local is Victor Depp from Fish Everything, where his, I think the Fish Everything hater that was making a giant presence. And looking at that bait and the look of the way it swims, I thought to myself initially looking at it that it was really hard to make because a glide bait is just really hard to make. If you don't weight that thing correctly to the T, it swims like dog doo-doo. But lo and behold, this is a botched swim bait that I forgot to put weights in because I was just upset about that and uh, I had nothing else better to do. I decided that I was gonna turn into a crank down. So after a nice gentleman told me on Facebook that the lip was finally made out of Lex and polycarbonate, went and bought that from the Lowe's store, stuck it in there, cut the third tail and that's all I did. I just put some weight in there so the thing would actually like sink a little bit even though this one was actually suspending. So I threw it out there on the first try, I get it right. And it was amazing to me how simple this bait was to make. This bait that everybody was blowing up, such a big deal. Oh my gosh, the new trend. It's way easier to make than a glide bait. I mean, anybody could really make this bait. It's almost like a beginner bait you want to make before you make a glide bait because it's so easy, it and, but it's super effective. I mean, I caught that stripper on it. Now I got a bunch of other ones out here and I'm going to show you how I'm going to convert these glide baits into swim baits. So if you already have a glide bait mold, this is how you convert your glide bait to a crank down. If you like the performance enough, you can remold it into that specifically. Special thanks to my boy Adam Ryan for giving me this B-roll. He was here this weekend and he helped me film the process of how I made these. I just started by marking it loosely with a pencil and then creating a drill bit and then putting it where I thought it would work. It turns out you have a lot of play with the bill. It can be a bunch of different ways and still swim really good. It kind of makes me lose respect for crank bake makers because, I mean, you can make that thing whatever you want. It's going to swim. So that should reassure you if you're wondering if you're going to mess this thing up. You probably are going to make it and it's probably going to swim. This is Lexan Polycarbonate. It's very easy to cut. I would use a Dremel. I have this cutoff wheel from Milwaukee, which is awesome. Ryobi also makes one, and most of the major companies also make one. And uh, I've been using actually Lexan Polycarbonate for a number of things ever since I found out about it. It's wonderful stuff. I didn't weight these when I made them, so I'm now drilling holes in the bottom and then reporting them out so I can drop in lead weights and then re resin over them. But then Adam also taught me a trick from Marlin Bates, the goat bait maker on YouTube like the king. Apparently he uses uh, super glue and baking soda and it instantly dries and it's just like, that's how you would fix baits and yeah, you can also fix like, wood and a bunch of other things. It's like, it's genius. Well, like, how did I not know about this? It's like, it's, it's, it's elevated my life ever since Brian taught me about it. 
and everything else, I kind of just use a Dremel. It, it goes right through the resin molds really easy. We trim this out. Um, I got these little super thin, you know, I guess stainless steel wire. You can even get aluminum wire and you just run it through the bottom. Although I'd use stainless steel is a little bit harder and a lot easier to use. We get the screw eyes. You can get them online from lureapartsonline.com or even from eBay, or you can get them from the local hardware store. They're just, they might rust if you get them from the hardware store. You just kind of put it all in and fix it all in. And if you're already doing these glide baits, like stuff like this is just tiddlywinks. You'll actually be upset you didn't do this sooner. I finished the rest of these up. I slot and I put in the screw eyes that'll connect all the pieces together. And then I stick them up here and I paint them. I paint them with testers paint from Hobby Lobby. I don't have time to do airbrushing. All you guys making fantastic airbrush baits. I am seriously envious of you, but I just don't have time for that crap. So here we are with spray paint. Quick tips about the painting. Really small, simple coats work. I know you saw me coating it on really earlier. That was like this lacquer stuff where the lacquer just dries and then it just leaves this, this like metal flake look. It's not actually paint. So you caught me toward the end of the process, but the initial process, read the back. If it says recoat within two hours or within three hours or within an hour, wait till like 55 minutes or an hour and 55 minutes. Like let the absolute amount of time to let it dry and then recoat it. But if it says recoat within two hours or within well, after 48 hours and don't record it after two hours because then your paint will crack. Like wait 48 hours. Don't record it after a day because your paint will ruin, I swear. And the longer you let it air out and dry, the better the result you're going to have. You won't have bubbling up later on when you resin it, and the paint's going to come off, and it's a big mess. I've rushed these in the painting. The painting is the most frustrating part of bait making, but once you get through it, you know, it works really well. And just use a tester's paint. Use a small paint cans with a small aerosol-like nozzle so it doesn't go everywhere, and it works out pretty well. After the painting process is done and they've dried and it's cured, then we get them and we put these fish eyes on them. I super glue them in because they stay in there longer. I put them on before we resin coat them in the UV resin. They're really cheap. You can get them really cheap from China, like from eBay. They take for a month to get here, but once they get here, they're in pretty plentiful stock and you should be fine. Then you resin coat them, you let it dry and cure, and then that's it. You just get the tail going and here we are. I chose to run the chartreuse one because it's the most universal color here where I'm at. And I, I don't really know how well it's going to do in the daytime, but we're going to throw it. So here we go. Oh, sick. GoPro, start, start recording. Oh my gosh. Okay. Dang. I didn't really think I was going to get one on the first cast. I should have started recording earlier. GoPro, start recording. Oh, wow. So that thing, that thing killed. That's a slaunch, dude. Man, I don't know what you did or why you bleed. I've never seen a bass bleed like that. That's kind of nuts. But that's a freaking nice, solid fish. It's a sub four, almost four. I'm gonna let you go. Off it goes. This is my new bait that I made, by the way. I was very surprised at how well this works. I only have another bait that kind of mimics what this one does that works as well for big bass. Uh, and I'll show you that one later, but this one, I will tell you, for just spoofing off the glide bait to make a jointed crank down bait, it's, it's boss. Yes. Look at your slaunch ass. Okay, not as big as the one earlier, but only because you're skinny, man. Look, you ain't been eating too well. What's going on? He's pan off the fish. I'm liking it. He's down there feeding on that school, for sure. When the weather's terrible, the fish bite even better, so we're gonna try that next. So 
let's fish for about average fish. They were nice, solid fish, but nothing to write home about. If you really want a big fish out here in Havasu, you gotta go when the weather's bad. And when nobody else wants to go out here. Notice how the lack of boats out here, and it's just us being out here. Well, that's what you gotta do. And if you're local, that's the only tip I'm gonna give you. After I graduated college, I snuck out to Parker because I had family out there with my wife. And I snuck out to Havasu, caught the biggest smallmouth of my life, lost my mind, moved up here on a whim, lived 10 minutes away from this lake, been happy ever since. During the time here, I was fortunate enough to meet a crew of people who slung big baits and were really good at fishing that kind of turned me on to how to use it. Because before that, I was just using Walmart gear and getting wrecked, getting spooled, kind of hating it that I couldn't land anything terribly big. But now I have the gear to throw this bait all day without getting tired and to be able to set a hook even though that bait is way out there. We're talking about a 10 foot X heavy swim bait rod. We're throwing this thing on and we are just crushing it. This fish is about twice as big as anything we caught the other day. So I have high hopes. I can't tell right away, but it looks like it could be my personal best at least for the year. Hey guys, so that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching it and for requesting this video. This video is by popular demand because the other video, though I didn't think it was really gonna go anywhere because it's not really what we do on this channel, it had enough positive feedback and it trends every now and then for me to throw a second one out there and see how it does. But ultimately, either way, I hope you guys try this. If you're gonna go and hit on take on a boat DIY, you can try a bait in between there. So it's not near as strenuous and time consuming as it is to build a boat and it is just as rewarding. I mean, I've now caught all my personal best fish on my own baits, on the boat that I built, and that is something to be said. I have a few more that I wanna show you with good footage, and those will be coming up depending on how this video does. Take care, guys. See you out there.